Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a great kit from Tamiya, which is the 135th scale M10 2C Achilles, which is the British version of the American M10 tank destroyer. So this is a brand new kit from Tamiya. It was released earlier this year, 2019, and the kit comes with four figures, a commander, a loader, a gunner, and then a half-height driver figure. And it comes with three sets of markings as well, although being a British vehicle, the markings are minimal anyway. So in this video I'm going to build and paint the kit and then I'm going to do some basic weathering including colour modulation and some streaking effects with some oils. I'm not going to do much more weathering than that at the moment because I want to put this into a diorama and I prefer to do the weathering of the diorama and the vehicle uh, all at the same time so that the colours match and blend together properly. Okay, time to start building. Thank you. 
So these are the ammunition racks which go inside the main body of the vehicle and they're just moulded into three pieces here so you can see the ammunition is not separate. That's going to make it slightly more difficult to paint so I'm actually going to leave these pieces separate from the vehicle until later in the construction process. <laughs> So adding the wheels is really the final stage of construction for the lower hull and I'm going to keep the lower hull separate from the rest of the vehicle during the building and painting process and as I move on now to the gun and the turret I'm going to keep the upper hull and the turret separate as well and this should make it easier for me to paint and do basic weathering like washes especially since this vehicle has an open fighting compartment.
And here is the almost completed turret painted in XF69 NATO black with some white highlighting added as well. And now I'm just adding a few final pieces of the gun. And here is the rest of the vehicle, also painted in NATO black with white highlights. This will be the shadow coat before I put the main coat of paint on. Don't worry about the fact that you can see the table through down through the top of the turret there. That's simply because I haven't put the sponsons inside the hole yet. And here are the ammo racks which I painted with uh, Tamiya white primer and then just hand painted the details, the gold and the black and the white. And these racks go here on the sponsons. The colour of the sponsons isn't really clear. On Tamiya's website their 138 scale Achilles has a white floor with white ammo racks and green sponsons. Which seems a little bit odd to me because I can't imagine the, the sky facing floor being bright white. And then on Tamiya's webpage for their 135 scale Achilles, it's the opposite. They have a green floor and they have white sponsons, which I think is probably more accurate. I'm actually going for a bit of a combination. I've got the white uh, tops of the sponsons and ammo racks, but I'm going to paint the side of the sponsons and the floor in green. So you can see the sponsons just slot in from below. And then they cover that gap, which we could see before, where we could look down and see the desk through the bottom of the tank. So that's taken care of now. Okay, now I've given the whole vehicle a coat of Tamiya XF58 olive green. I've been a little bit heavy on this coat, actually, and I've lost quite a lot of that shadow coat from below. But hopefully I should get some colour modulation in there with some oil paints, so we should still get some variation in the paint job anyway.
So at this stage I gave the vehicle a gloss coat of Tamiya TS13 and then I started to use the black Tamiya panel liner just to provide some shadows like a pin wash around key parts. So these are little extrusions on the front of the vehicle, around any bolts or hinges, basically anywhere where there might be a shadow effect required. Effect of a little bit of wear on the floor of the fighting compartment. I used XF56 metallic grey and just dry brushed that over the texture there just to make it look like the paint had worn away. We supply these rubber tracks which can be glued with normal glue. So I painted them rubber black and then just added some metallic grey down the sides. So at this stage I started some colour modulation techniques and this is a technique I've seen done really well by Panzermeister36 on his channel so I thought I would just uh, borrow that technique. I've taken some sap green oil paint by Windsor & Newton and I'm just applying a really really small amount to the top of the panels. If I need more I can always add more later. And then with a dry brush with no thinner I'm just slowly trying to work this into the rest of the paintwork, just trying to blend it to get a smooth, quite subtle transition. This can be really frightening to do at first because it looks like you're really messing up your model, but it does blend in well and it does dry looking much more subtle than it does at the moment. So this is the paint that I used and I'm doing exactly the same technique here on the turret. Also, oil paints have a really long drying time, so if you do somehow make a massive mess of your model, you can always take some thinner and just remove the paint.
Okay, so now I'm going to add an oil dot filter. This is a really useful technique for a lot of Allied vehicles because they do tend to be painted in a single colour and so they can look quite boring. So an oil dot filter will hopefully help break up that monotony. So on the turret here I'm adding tiny dots of various oil paints. I think I've used here Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber, a small amount of yellow, a little bit of white, some sap green, maybe one or two others as well. And this is the scary bit, you take a brush dampened with thinner and you run it vertically down the surface like this. Yes, this looks really awful at the moment, but it will improve. The trick is really just to gradually blend in the streaks, always going vertically on, a, on this surface. And I've got lots of working time, remember, so I can just gradually and slowly blend it in. And you can see already that the monotony of the paint is broken up, but it still does look quite realistic with these sort of shades of green and brown. Here I'm applying a similar effect on the front of the tank. And it looks really quite streaky here, so I'm going for an extra few passes just to blend it in, make it a bit more subtle. Ok with that done it's time for a little bit of detail painting in the interior of the cockpit, or the uh, fighting compartment should I say. And here I'm using a fine brush and a slightly lighter colour of the base coat just to add some small chips around the edges of certain components. This is a combination of the base coat, which is XF58 olive green, with a little bit of XF71 interior green mixed in. And this is supposed to represent chips where the paint's been scuffed but it hasn't gone through to the metal. And I'm using the same colour just on the top of raised details like the bolt heads and so on just to make them stand out a little bit.
And I think in this section in particular, the bogey detail really stands out once it's been given that highlighted effect on the raised detail. And then finally, for just some of the biggest chips, I've taken a bit of XF53 metallic grey, and I'm just dropping a tiny amount of that into the centre of some of those big chips, just to give a kind of 3D effect. Okay, now that's done, I am adding a few details to the fighting compartment. There's a fire extinguisher which needs to go in. That was painted separately, that's why I left it till the end. And then the ammunition just slots in, it's a bit of a tight fit. I've glued those in as well. and an ammunition box which goes above the shells. And then finally, I didn't film it because it was quite fiddly, but there are four Sten guns which go on the interior walls of the turret. And the final detail is to add the machine gun on the back of the turret. Okay, and with all that done, that is the end of the construction and the painting process for now. As I said earlier, I will do some more weathering, especially to the tracks, once I have this in a diorama and I know exactly what colours I'm going to use for things like pigments and mud and dirt and so on. Okay, and here is the final result. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that build video. This Achilles is going to go alongside the Dutch house which I previewed in my previous video. And the video for that should hopefully be up within a few weeks. So thank you again for watching and if you enjoyed this video please remember to hit subscribe.